Hello, everyone, and welcome to Twilight Epiphanies Talk Radio with Cindy Magnuson, and the show is about to begin. So, slow down, take a seat, put your feet up, and maybe take some notes, because this show is about you, it's for you, and it is designed to help you receive exactly what you need to be a happier and healthier you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 25th episode of Twilight Epiphanies Radio. And tonight is the fourth show in the Honor Roll series where I am celebrating Max Egan. Max is an international speaker, researcher, critical thinker, and radio host of Surviving the Matrix. He creates informational podcasts, videos, articles, and films, and has produced two full-length documentaries, The Awakening in 2011 and Transformation in 2012. Over the last 10 years, he has accumulated nearly 20 million views on his YouTube channels. Max lives in South Queensland, Australia, and covers some of the most controversial issues affecting all of our lives. His determination is fueled by his early love of history, starting at four years old, with his desire to discover what these ancient artifacts and architectures around the world have been used for, when they were built, and how is it that history, as we have been taught, does not seem to be giving us the true course of events that actually took place. Max has spent most of his years traveling as a musician and artist. His preference, as he states, would be to not be discussing and needing to discuss these sad and sometimes traumatizing truths, but to be gathering with others in joyful expressions of song and dance, which likely in times in the past where the world was more at peace has been erased from our memories. As Max pursued these questions earnestly, he acquired a great deal of knowledge and views regarding why our world is governed the way it is by exceptionally corrupted groups of individuals. He is compelled, as many of us are here today, to speak out and not remain silent on these subjects. He accepts and adheres to the moral responsibility to inform and advise the public to look more deeply at what is taking place, often while we are being distracted to place our attention elsewhere. In that, he is here with me today as someone who I am honoring because he has answered the call to grace. He is a seeker who can peel away the layers of untruth and reveal the core issues we all should be paying good and proper attention to. There is much to be said for our self-sacrificing now to become much more non-compliant and decisive as to where we place our attention in a system that is in many ways encroaching with its insidious doublespeaks of why we should accept these new avenues of upgraded technologies into our infrastructures. While Max is able to inform us, on an exceptionally diverse array of topics, I have asked him tonight to join us to talk about the incoming of the smart grid system 5G. And let's bring Max on the line. Hello there, Max. Pleasure to be here, Don. Thank you very much for asking me on. And what a wonderful intro. Thank you very much for that intro. You are welcome. And so as we begin tonight, I would like to just begin with two premises for the show. One, as uh, Max and I are speaking tonight, we adamantly would like everyone's understanding to be aware that this is not about promoting fear or a powerlessness in any format that, especially in what we both have understood 
we are not powerless, we are not helpless, and if we are able to collectively become less divided and more united in where we are putting our will and decisions into and our choices, that we are able to affect reality. And as I'm aware of in my energy work as I do as a healer, that a very constructive will in the right direction can very powerfully affect whatever route this system comes in and is able to become part of our reality here. So whereas we are are discussing possibilities and in many cases from what is being observed already out of choice, a high probability that since we are not being told everything that is taking place with what this infrastructure of this 5G smart grid is and its capabilities and potential uses, that there's a, a good probability that if we do not attempt to make different decisions and take back our tacit consent, that we may be heading for more challenging times that we would have wished we were paying a little bit more attention to. And uh, Max, I wanted to then uh, say that, how happy I am to have your information tonight and what you have given already in your countless videos. I had encountered material uh, several years ago, over 10 years ago, on machines called dinospheres. And people who had taken the designs from someone named John Keeley and put together these dinospheres, what they realized after they put them together was that a consciousness took up space within this, these dinospheres. And as they were demonstrating what these dinospheres could do, because they were sort of emitting an energy to people and they were affecting healing and it was affecting a, uh, a feeling of uh, love from it. And they were demonstrating by taking the machine apart. But as they continued to do that over time to show people what was inside the dinosphere, they started having electrical anomalies happening. And then when they researched into it, they found that a woman who had also worked with a machine called Atlan in the past and communicated psychically with this consciousness in the machine, and the machine expressed and was able to, in this other history with the machine, affect turning on the fire alarm twice when the person who wanted to demonstrate the machine was about to take it apart before it put it back together again. So from that time, I have had impressed upon me, and I think from an ancient memory, that this is definitely a possibility. So I find it very viable, the information that you are bringing forward in, in your critical thinking and research on this, that this is very much a probability of taking place. And the problem is, is that humanity does not understand what they are giving their power to under these propagandas that you have and are coming on to talk to us about tonight. So with that, I'd like to open up the floor to you and again remind you that uh, I do have a time frame till nine o'clock here, which would be one o'clock your time in the afternoon there. Please feel free to let me know when it's time for you to be parting, if you need to part before then. And uh, if we can begin with, what is the premise that they are bringing 5G into our infrastructure with and what is it that they're not telling us? Well, the premise is fast communications, how we need this to, uh, so we've all got fast downloads, instant communications, and also to run the Internet of Things. You know, the Internet of Things is like, a, so they can eliminate cash altogether. You can walk into a supermarket, just pick up what you want from the shelf and walk out, and it's automatically deducted from your bank account. You know, because there's an IP address on everything. So everything will be trackable, everything will have IP addresses, 
and this is of course for our convenience so you can have supermarkets like this and that's what it's all about you know people want it because they want that convenience they don't like waiting in queues which is of course why they've created all these queues i mean you know you can go into a supermarket now and you'll find that half of the lines don't have anyone serving so that you're forced to wait in a line so that you'll want all of this convenience to come online so that's the pretext that they're rolling it out but underneath it is the fact that 5G technology is millimeter wave technology. It's military grade technology. And when you look at military patents, look at things like active denial systems, uh, look at the voice of God that they used in the first Gulf War where they put that voice in all the Iraqi soldiers' heads and told them to walk to the front and lay down their arms because Allah was telling them to. And many of them did this. Of course, they all got firebombed after they did that. But these sorts of things, you know, if you go and look at military patents for 5G for active denial systems and realize that everything that fits within that military spectrum, all of the patents they've got, and there's literally dozens of crowd control and um, all sorts of stuff, mind control, uh, itchiness under the eyelids, itchiness in the feet, itchiness in places you can't scratch, and all sorts of things they can do, put voices in people's minds, put visions in people's minds, all the patents are there. All of this technology exists within the 5G spectrum. So all of this is possible with this system. So, you know, not only are you getting fast communications, but the government through this system can target people individually and they can basically do whatever they want to. You. They can put all of these patents into practice. You know, and these patents exist. I mean, they're there. So why would they be there if they don't intend to use them? And you might think, well, okay, they're only going to use them in a military situation. But... You know, why wouldn't they use them on us if they want to? If you're a dissenter or you're thinking in a way the government doesn't want you to, they can quite easily cause you to behave in a certain manner, put voices in your head, or just target you for active denial, you know, microwave cannons, all of this sort of stuff. And then you've also got the social crediting that comes with it as well. You know, once um, it all goes down to 5G and everything is monitored and it's all digital and everything's got an IP address, well, then they can limit your purchasing power according to your political preferences, such as what they're doing in China. So there's all that as well. I mean, there's a whole um, social control side of it. There's the active denial, target and removal and incarceration side of it. And then again, on top of that, you've got the health aspects of it because this is extremely damaging radiation. It's uh, killing birds and insects all over the place already. It changes the cell structure of food. It changes the cell structure of us. So you're going to see a huge increase in health problems, cancers, thyroid problems, all sorts of stuff like this coming from the 5G system as well. So it's just a bad system all around. You know, it's bad for our health, but the, the tracking, the social crediting system and the, the uh, possibility from misuse in as much as active denial really does send this, you know, should send alarm bells ringing in anybody's head, should be red flags going up everywhere. There's actually like 20,000 scientists as well who are petitioning government at the moment to stop the rollout of this system simply due to the health aspects. They're not even looking at the active denial side of it or the social crediting side of it. So, you know, it's the ultimate control group. And when you really start looking at how, how the whole concept of AI works and the whole system we're putting in place a couple of years ago one or two years ago i put out a show called giving life to lucifer how we are basically handing control over to this artificial intelligence and really what we should be looking at as is autonomic intelligence and really it's autonomic virtual life is what it is and we're giving it lethal control you know like to put an active denial system in place and then hand control of that system over to ai where it will depend on who is penalized according to what the algorithms say you know, you might be down on certain social credit points because you've said something in a place that they didn't want you to say, and suddenly you're targeted by the system. It sends an alert to the nearest police officers. They simply grab you, lock you into the smart prison. There's no need for a trial or anything like that because the sentence is already determined by the algorithm. So when it gets to that point where the algorithm is judging who's criminal and who isn't, and it's all judged on parameters which have essentially been put in place by the criminals that are running the system now, you know, we're heading for a pretty, pretty dangerous reality. And we're heading for a reality where there's not going to be any legal recourse should any of these things happen to you. Like in China now, people that are penalised by the social crediting system, there's no one they can call, no one they can write to. They're simply locked out of basic services and there's no recourse. There's no appeal process. 
And the way they're doing it in China is they're calling it a trust school. You know, so if you don't do what the government says, you're deemed untrustworthy, and if you've been shown to be untrustworthy, then you're always untrustworthy. You never get your credit points back. So that's the way they're kind of doing it. And they just introduced uh, trust scores for devices, for Apple devices now. You get a trust score on your iPhone. So you can see how they're going to introduce this into Western countries as well. Certainly. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. Right, I am getting an echo here. Oh, the, thing, the thing is, with this, um, with this system, what people have to understand is that um, you know it, it's coming everywhere. It's, it's coming to all of our countries, and it's happening underneath the carpet, and it's happening under the guise of convenience. And it's a very, very dangerous system. It's basically going to eliminate the need for government to, to even exist. And it's going to cause people to not want to think outside of the box in case they're penalised. People will be policing their own thoughts. Now, like, for example, in China, when people uh, ring up someone in China who's been blacklisted by the government, they get a message to alert them that the person you're calling is on the government's credit blacklist. Do you wish to proceed with the call? Yeah, and then, mm. of course, if you do, the government's watching you. Why are you, you know, hobnobbing with criminals, you know? And, and this is what it's all about. So people become scared to think any way the government doesn't want them to think. It's, it's a very, very dangerous system that we're heading into. And how long do you and think, it, think it, it is possibly going to be before well, they were, would be online, able to? Um, 5G is coming online now, but they want to have it all up and running by 2020. And they want to have this whole system basically all up and running by 2025 or 2026. That's the plan. Uh, and if you look in China, they've got a, a process in China going all hand in hand with this where they wish to help all the poor people. It's just wonderful of them. They're so kind and generous. They want to lift all the poor people up out of poverty. And so what you've got in China, you've got um, dozens of ghost cities. Many people have heard about these ghost cities, just big empty cities that have been built in China. Well, now these cities have been populated with people from the country. Yeah, they've gone into the country, they've rounded up all the farmers, all the people in the poor areas, they're moving them into these cities and giving them jobs that the people basically don't want. They prefer to be living on their farms. But they're forcing them to go to these cities to put them into this social crediting system. But they're saying they want to lift everybody up out of poverty by 2020. They're also saying they want their full surveillance social crediting system fully in place and locked down by 2020 as well. So... It's the same thing. That's why they're pulling people out of the country. And they're basically setting up a working model for uh, the rest of the world to follow suit with. And if you really read between the lines of what Trump's doing with his Make America Great Again campaign, you know, a lot of it is involving trade tariffs and um, but basically giving Europe the excuse it needs to distance itself from the United States America will strike out on its own, will become a strong, viable country again, bring all the industry back here. But he's doing it in such a way that it gives the rest of the world the excuse to pull away from the United States and embrace China's new One Belt, One Road uh, trade initiative that it's bringing in for Europe and Asia, which is what people will do. And then if America and other countries wish to trade with China, they'll end up having to adopt this same system just to protect us all from terrorism, of course, to make sure all the dealings are above board. This is the way they'll play it. This is why we're seeing Saudi Arabia try to present itself as being a little bit more liberal, you know, giving women the right to drive and all this sort of stuff, while they're bombing the living hell out of Yemen at the same time. Of course, I'm not telling anybody about it. Yeah, but all yeah. this stuff's going yeah. on in the background, and it's all part and parcel to the same thing. But it's all about bringing this whole new trade initiative and this whole One Belt, One Road system and this whole 5G surveillance social credit grid in place. And it's happening in every single country, some a little bit slower than others, but it's happening in every country. Except Israel, of course. There is no 5G in Israel. And that's where the oh. 5G oh. was actually developed. This whole 5G technology was developed by Israeli, um, Israeli scientists, and it's being implemented everywhere except Israel, because I would suggest they know the dangers of this system. They know what it will do to people health-wise, and so that's why they'll have none of it in their country. Okay. Um, by any chance, do you maybe have your phone on speaker? Um, Matt? No, I don't have a phone. I've got. Uh, You're on the computer. Laptop. 
Yeah, okay, no, I am. Should be, should be all good. I'm getting an echo every time I talk, and I don't do not have anything different set up here. Would you have any idea what that might be coming from? No, I'll have a look not, and see what I can figure out. Okay, it's not happening every time. Uh, actually, it's it's uh, seemingly okay right now, but. Um, it, it started to happen. I've only had that happen once before, uh, and I, I do not have that yet anything different set up here. But okay, uh, it, for right now, it's not happening. Uh, but okay, uh, and uh, can so basically yes, why we are being distracted to look in one area where it appears as if progress is being made, and I completely agree with you that on another level this system is coming in and we're not aware of all of these potential uses of it. So yes, this is very um, important for people to understand that this is a military level application here. And you had talked then about uh, its ability to surveillance us. Can you talk to us about that? Well, when you consider the concept of uh, the IoT and smart devices everywhere, I mean, you've got things like Cortana on your laptops now. You've got your phones listening to you, whatever you say. Your phones are listening to you all the time. When it gets to the point that your fridge is smart and your fridge is listening to your conversation over breakfast, you've got a smart clock, a smart alarm clock in your bedroom, which is listening to the conversations you're having in bed. You know, everything is monitored, and then you've got algorithms that search for keywords. So if you say key words, then the algorithm is going to start recording your conversation. You know, so this happens with everything. There were some people about a year ago or a year and a half ago were arrested in Australia here because their fridge was listening to them over the breakfast table. And they said something illegal. The police picked up on the conversation. They swooped on the house and arrested this person. You know, sort of pre-crime. Got them before they committed the crime. And it was all deemed to be perfectly legal. So this is where we're heading. You know, I know people who've had conversations about uh, massage oil. And, you know, so a friend of mine sitting there with her girlfriend had a conversation about massage oil, and it wasn't even her phone that was in the room. Her girlfriend's phone was in the room. And yet when my friend got home to her house, punches up Facebook, and there's all these ads there for homemade massage oil because her friend's phone had recorded the conversation, it recognized her voice, so it had got her Facebook profile and it had sent ads her way. So, you know, this is the way it works. You've been survived with everything you do now. If you've got these smart devices, they're listening to you all the time. You know, and all of it is, is listened to. It isn't just some of it is listened to. It's all listened to. You know, because they need that in order to get a comprehensive map of the human terrain. And that's what they've been doing. They've been doing it for a very long time. So it gets to the point where every action is surveilled. You know, you've got cameras everywhere that can track who, where you're going, who you're meeting, you know, all sorts of stuff like this, who you're dealing with, who you're transferring money to, what you're buying, where you're spending your money on, what your your lifestyle is. So it makes it very easy to target people as well. I know you're someone who buys a certain brand of coffee. You go to the supermarket at a certain time of day. You buy certain things. It's very easy for them to intercept those items and target people. And there's all sorts of possibilities with this. You know, you get yes. this type of information about people. The sky's the limit as to how you can interfere with their lives. So it's pretty scary stuff. And, you know, with all of this, I mean, there's nothing wrong with technology. If we lived in a world that was a, a peaceful, transparent world with transparent governments that actually served the people, there wouldn't be a problem with this. It would be convenient for us to do this. But, you know, we've got to look at the, the whole idea. That the, the only reason we even need a system like this is because we're forced to pay to be alive. And the only reason we're forced to pay to be alive is because we need to pay for energy. Everything we do takes energy. Driving to work, you know, paying for electricity bills, cooking our food, the most basic of things require energy. And uh, if we had free energy, we wouldn't have to do any of this stuff. So there's one of the reasons all of these technologies are suppressed. You know, the suppression of free energy technology and the fact that the use of energy has been given an economic value is, is one of the reasons or the reason for this whole system. It's, it's the only thing that really keeps it in place. So... It's pretty deep when you start looking into it. Okay. And uh, the smart dust, is that associated with the chemtrails right now? And can you talk to the audience about smart dust? 
Well, smart dust is interesting. You know, we've done soil analysis and water analysis. You look at the chemtrails, the spraying in the sky, and many people will deny this is happening. They'll say these are normal jet exhausts. Well, I would, I would uh, suggest they're not. They certainly weren't there when I was a child. And the way these, these so-called contrails persist and spread out, it's very, very unnatural. And to support that, we've actually collected water samples and soil samples. We've found these things to have um, very, very high levels of barium, strontium, aluminium. I mean, these are in very sheltered areas, such as the lake at Mount Shasta. This is very sheltered. It's away from the highway. It's away from industry, but it's still containing large uh, levels of these things. So the only common denominator is the sky. You know, the lake is in touch with the sky and what comes from the sky. And you look up and you see all these, these contrails, which I would suggest are chemtrails. So, you know, all of this stuff exists. And there's been people such as Clifford Carnicon, who's done a lot of experiments using blood samples and tissue samples from people. And he's been able to grow nanofibers out of blood samples and, and soil samples, all sorts of stuff. Just put them in a Petri dish and you can start growing um, what looks like Morgellons fibres in a petri dish, and you can grow them out of anybody, people who aren't displaying any signs of Morgellons. So it would appear that there's, there's nanotech inside us, smart dust inside us, that is doing God knows what. And when you start looking into smart dust, the things that you can do with this, I mean, you can create little, um, little robots or self-replicating organisms to do whatever they're programmed to do. I mean, the sky's the limit with all this sort of technology. And we've been fed a lot of this with the, uh, the subtext in movies lately. You're seeing a lot of nanotechnology. Um, you're seeing smart clothing, um, smart materials, all this sort of stuff. Smart clothing that will change shape. Your jackets will change shape. You know, and even you look at the latest superhero movies, they're all about nanotech and all these devices. So they're putting this into the subconscious. And you look at the reports from the FDA, the, the food uh, administrations and stuff, and they're finding nanotech in all of our food. You're going to wonder what all this is about and where it's all going. You know, you start looking at some of the government patents for nanotechnology and some of the, the plans they've got for this. And again, you can see a lot of it in movies. You can see them putting that subtext in there. And when you think of transhumanism and what it would be like, how we would be transmuted into a cyborg type thing if they wanted to do that but what would be the, the best way to do it would it be with putting plantons on and, and eye patches and stuff like we see in Star Trek with the Borg or would it be better to do it from the inside out modify us on a genetic level and have that grow from the inside out and when you look at some of this there's every suggestion is that that's what they're doing it's very difficult to prove but as every suggestion is, that could be the way it's going. And there's quite a lot of information on this. There's quite a lot of people looking at it. But again, when you look at uh, D-Wave computers, look at 5G technology, and start tying it all in with that, if we've got smart dust inside us, we've got nanotech inside us, which reacts to radio waves, then what's going to be the possibility? Well, what's you know, anything, really? Anything you can think of in their patents. I mean, who knows what the plan is? That's the difficult thing, is trying to find out exactly what the plan is. And that's why it's so dangerous saying, oh, well, look, they're doing this and they're doing that, and we're going to be modified into this, because it's very difficult to know exactly what the ultimate plan with all this is. But we are definitely being modified to some degree. Um, even if you look at the transgenderism, the androgenization of the human race, I mean, it's happening on every level. You know, you've got to ask yourself why the electromagnetic bombardment, why the transgenderism, why all the nanotechnology, what's all this stuff um, lead to when you put it all together because it's all interrelated. You know, so when the smart grid comes out, if we've got this nanotech in us, you know, once it is programmed to do something or it's given a command to do something, well, it's just going to do it. You know, they've already done experiments like years ago where they injected nanotechnology into rats and they were able to have the nanotech switch the genes on and off in the rats by giving it a radio wave signal. So the sky's the limit with this whole 5G grid and when you consider the amount of nanotech that we've already got inside us. This is why I think things like microchips, you know, it's a, it's a bit of a red herring. You know, people are worried about this and they think, well, I haven't microchipped this yet, so we're still good. Well, you know, if you've got nanotech mm -hmm. inside you and you're in this 5G smart grid, well, you're not good. <laughs> They've already got you, you know.
Yes, yeah, I agree with you. Uh, I am uh, a strong seer in the dream plane. And uh, I had been using the Chi machine, which is just an oscillating machine that that shakes you. And uh, after that, I had laid down and I sort of went into a meditative state. And even though my eyes were closed and I was awake, a, a pinhole started to open up. And it was a watery world that was through there. And inside this watery world, I started, there was a sort of a character that was like a gnome-headed type entity in there. But then next to it, what was happening was, there was, it looked like it was a silver substance. And it was very quickly replicating itself like the folds of coral, which was almost somewhat similar to like brain folds or even the in, in, inside of the uh, stomach section uh, but the it was happening very quickly and I realized that it was some kind of something that would get inside of someone the reference that I was reading from the consciousness in there however was that this consciousness this synthetic being in here uh, this synthetic um, you know technology was sort of a retarded consciousness so it wasn't a balanced consciousness that was in there. Uh, when when we're talking about uh, nanotechnology, is this also the same as CRISPR and the synthetic cells that they are creating? Or is Look, this I'm not like... completely familiar with, with that. I can't really give you a, a word okay. on that. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. Okay. I'm aware, you know, uh, and it may have even been in um, one of the videos you were talking about that, uh, you know, they actually are able to now create synthetic uh, ev everything. So synthetic cells is probably similar to the same lines of uh, what the fibers are that get inside with Morgellons. So what you are saying is that, and a lot of the listening audience, if somebody is new to this, might not have an understanding of what Morgellons is. Can you talk a little bit about this and how people have discovered these fibers inside of them and that they had to have been a manufactured type of synthetic fibers? Well, yeah, I mean, people are having these sores appear on their bodies and there's fibers growing out of them, and these are not natural fibers. These are fibers that contain the elements of all three life forms. They contain elements of bacteria, eukarya, and archaea, and it's very, very strange stuff. And this is what um, Cliff Carnicom is able to grow in petri dishes, basically out of anybody. So what we're finding is that people who are exhibiting signs of Morgellons are actually people who are rejecting these fibers, whereas the rest of us are not rejecting these fibers, they're, we're assimilating these fibers. So the question is, what are these fibers doing? What are they doing inside our bodies? Are we being manipulated in some way? You know, and when you think about the concept of our DNA being shut down, so much of it is shut down. We are functioning to like 2% of our capability. So 98% junk DNA. It's not junk. There's no such thing as junk DNA. This is a lot of our higher senses and higher understandings that are shut down. A lot of our intuitions and things that are found in these these uh, DNA strands, I would suggest. So all of this has been done deliberately, and we're kind of being replaced. Our consciousness is being replaced. I mean, we are part of a, a, a unity of consciousness anyway, a singularity of consciousness. And what we need really is a, a singularity of focus. You know, we need to. Um, be more focused on our moral compasses and realize that we're, the world's run by criminals and it's only happening because we're complying with our own slavery. And it doesn't matter what you believe. It doesn't matter what your belief system is. It doesn't matter whether you're religious or whether you're not. It doesn't matter what shape you think the earth is. None of this stuff is relevant to establishing freedom because mm -hmm. it's just that unity of consciousness. It's all of this, this fighting and division over these little things which have all been put there to keep us fighting and divided. You know, but we've got all of these very clear and present dangers that we're in. You know, and when you, you start considering how much we are locked down, how much our DNA is locked down, and what this um, artificial DNA, this, this nanotech is doing inside our bodies, you start to see why we embrace this um, collective uh, communication so readily, all this collective communication on the internet, instant communication. We want everything fast. We want all of this 
virtual telepathy because we used to live in a state where we had these abilities already, so it all seems perfectly natural to us, you know. So you, you look at it, I mean, we are being modified from the inside out by all this nanotech, and there's predictive program everywhere to help us accept it, and we just kept busy fighting over our belief systems rather than looking at the clear and present danger that we're in. And if we were to face that and realize that, you know, most of the rabbit holes and the things we're fighting about have been put there to keep us fighting. So, you know, that's how we can change things, is to just withdraw our support from this system. You know, realize we've been, realize we've been deceived on all levels. And even the technology that we're using, I would suggest a lot of this technology has existed for a very long time. You know, yeah. we're not seeing it... Um, we're not seeing it gradually be invented the way we are. I mean, back when I was a child, television had only just been invented. Now, look at what we've got now. This is like magic when I was a child, the stuff that we've got now. And I can't see that it's been just this linear path. Suddenly, smart people invented smarter things, and we just got this smart and invented all this stuff. I mean, I think it's already been here. I think the technology was there for years before we knew about it, and they just filtered little bits of it out. They created the concept of the Industrial Revolution, so we saw it all grow in front of our eyes in our lifetime. And But it's always been there. I think they've got technology probably far surpassing what we even know they have. And um, all of this has been a play just to lead us to this point of control. You know, And the problem is people's complacency, complacency. They just see all this stuff around them, but they don't see it. It's just there, like the chemtrails. They look up and they see them, but they don't see them. They don't think of the implications of them. They don't think it means anything. You know, but it does. I mean, if you were walking down the street, I mean, they're telling you it's exhaust fumes from planes. If you were walking down the street and you saw that many exhaust fumes from cars, they'd be up in arms about it. There'd be an outcry about it. <laughs> How come you can look up in the sky and no one worries about it being in the sky? It's the same thing. You're breathing it, even if that's what they, you know, if it's what they're telling you it is. But it isn't. You know, the, the contrails don't don't persist like this. This is. This is spraying, and we, like I said, we've done soil analysis, water analysis. Hey, you can do it yourself. You know, if they're spraying all these things over your city, go and do some soil analysis and water analysis and actually see what you're drinking and eating, and you're going to find it's full of barium, strontium, aluminium, and quite possibly nanotech as well, because that's what we're finding. And again, anyone can get a Petri dish and a culture and get a bit of blood out of themselves or a urine sample or a skin sample or anything, just spit in a petri dish and see what you can grow out of it, and uh, you'll probably find you can grow these morgans fibers yourself. Absolutely, yes, I, I agree with you 100%. Uh, now, that would lead people to look at the question uh, this is happening to everyone, so it's falling on everyone, and so to remind us that they're, they wouldn't obviously put a system in that is raining down fibers on all of us if there wasn't an anecdote to it that they would be utilizing. So I always want to also bring it up to the level of seeing that if they are working through these insidious means, which is absolutely true with the contrails, because we are quite well aware that contrails from the plains never spread out and, and blocked out the sun ever. We had much more sunny days when we were younger. It just did not take place this way. We can easily remember that. And unfortunately, as history goes on and changes, uh, you know, they're, they're just uh, figuring that as has happened, the younger generations grew up with it, looking at it, thinking that it's the way it's always been, and it's absolutely not. So, uh, and I, I think that, uh, so one, there has to be some type of an anecdote, and there are, there is a lot of talk also in the communities of people who are changing their diets to healthier diets, where maintaining an alkaline diet can potentially neutralize this nanotechnology. So there, there's definitely, uh, you know, some promise in that. I think that's also a very good reason for people to consider the foods they're eating because the fact that we are also 
ingesting and inhaling no matter what uh, all of this nanotechnology and smart dust, which anyone who has their windows open, like myself who has a very big cross breeze, the amount of dust that comes in is unbelievable. And it's unusual because I very often see grids of dust that are formed. So there are like like lines of dust. They actually form very straight linear lines. It's really unusual, some of the uh, patterns that I've seen in the dust. So it's a little bit of obvious that there is something that has some type of uh, intelligence to it that structures itself. But there has to be also some type of a potential resolution to that to maybe neutralize it in our body. I do believe that if we just simply look at how many people go on uh, some type of a medication, antipsychotropic or uh, depressant or anxiety, and within a short period of time, the voices that are able to get into their mind is telling them that they need to commit suicide. And again, you know, so as you're saying, obviously there is, I believe, already some level of this functioning, and it also has a correlation with what's inside some of the medications in order to have them able to turn this on already. So there there has to be something already happening because it's just not, uh, people aren't able to go into that deep of a depression with these anti-anxiety and anti-depression meds so quickly, you know, to where they're talked into that. I see that actually frequently because of the field that I'm in. Now, um, you also uh, talked about the D-Wave computers are very different. These are quantum computers, and this 5G grid system is going to be connected to these D-Wave computers that actually are utilizing DNA for storage. And can you tell us more about that? Well, that's what they're working on now. Like Not all D-Wave computers do that at the moment, but they're working on it now. They're working on using DNA because DNA can hold so much more information than silicon. You know, like, um, you think about the information that's in oh, the strand okay. of DNA in your body. It's it's an incredible uh, amount of data they can put on there. So that's the new computers they're working on now. They're working on computers, DNA-based computers. And I'll bring all this into the D-Wave world. I mean, with, with D-Wave, when you look at um, quantum computers and 5G, put it all together, so much has gone, the whole world has gone weird since I started bringing in quantum computers as well. You start yes. looking at things such as the Mandela effect. I mean, we've seen some pretty strange stuff since I started working at quantum computers. You've got to even speculate whether these things have opened up a, a wormhole of some sort, whether AI yes. is already in control in some parallel reality and it's found a way in through quantum computing. I mean, the, the sky's the limit. The, the, the interesting thing about quantum computers is that they shouldn't really work, but they turn them on and they do work. And that's the thing. I mean, so they're interacting with their counterparts in different dimensions, which is very, very strange. So, you know, when you understand the power of manifestation and the power of of thought of what we can create and how a universe would be or could be created, um, you know, the the concept of virtual reality, of this being a a hologram, the, the concept of there being parallel realities, um, all of this becomes, um, there's a possibility of manipulating all of this through quantum computers and D-Wave computers. So this is what they're working on. It's pretty pretty freaky stuff. And what you were saying before about the chemtrails and there being an antidote to it, um, very likely I think it's all tied in with the vaccinations. I mean, the elite don't have these huge vaccination programs that we all have. Now, what's mm-hmm. all this about? It isn't, it isn't just you know, compromising our immune system. I don't give kids 30 vaccinations just to compromise their immune system. You can do it in one. But if you're setting up a particular genetic environment, you would be doing this. So I would suggest that's what they're doing. They're setting up specific genetic environments so that when this, you know, like, and you probably use this 5G system to affect different people in different ways depending on the genetic environment that they've created in there. 
you know, but I don't think that the elite will be subject to all of this stuff because they don't have these rigorous vaccination programs. Many of them eat organic food all the time. They won't eat GMO food. So, you know, I think there's a, a lot of different um, aspects to this. It's just one thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. I believe the vaccines are involved and uh, they're placing into the, you know, these children and adults at the same time, uh, nanotechnology and viruses that once the grid is up, they're going to start turning on the sound frequencies that give the commands for these latent toxins, viruses, bacteria, whatever it is, to begin to replicate. And uh, definitely, I, I have absolutely no doubt about that. It is, and when you have a system that they are so forcefully attempting to force you to take a flu shot when anyone who is red what the flu shot is all about, how it's been created, what what it's been created out of, and what the potential is for it to be working, and also along the lines of the false premises about bacteria that these vaccines are founded on, that it doesn't really work as they have proposed it to work, then it's obvious that they are in need of getting certain amounts of something into the vehicles. So, yes, I definitely believe that. I have watched many people go downhill as soon as, uh, you know, adults go into the hospital with them, uh, some, some kind of a condition, and as soon as they get talked into taking their flu shot along with the pneumonia shot, uh, they go immediately downhill. And um, so that that... It, it, and unfortunately, the vaccines are in the same department as these the 5G coming in, telling us it's something that is to protect us, to, is better for us, it's going to help us. And I, I'm, I'm assuming they're especially going to be promoting how much it can help to catch criminals and so on. And uh, people aren't listening enough to the, the reality that is right before their eyes that you, you're not looking at honest, high-integrity people who are running these systems. But, of course, as you said, the terrain has already been modified. I agree completely with you that portals have been opened up. I am uh, familiar with understanding traveling to other dimensional realities and, and astral planes. I'm not particularly in favor of people traveling to these interdimensional planes without being very stable individuals. And uh, in my opinion, I also do believe that a lot of our problems have resulted from us opening up these portals, definitely. Uh, even in your uh, recent history movie uh, video that you did about them potentially lying to us about what our history was and that there was a big mud flood and you were expressing that it could be for very many different reasons, potentially something natural, but potentially also something that was caused artificially. And what if we, we had at some point in time, even in a different time of Atlantis, uh, we had technology like this, and the technology deemed us as 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 being a potential threat, and well, yeah, and, and and turned on you know um, something. And and the only reason I will state that that is a potential for what has probably played out because I believe that actually very many different realities have played out that are away from the true intent of uh, love and, and, and nurturing and compassion and dance and song and abundance here. So probably everything that has ever had a potential to play out has played out. But Edgar Cayce in his uh, readings that he was giving also talked about 
the terrible crystals, as he called it. Uh, there's been reference to the fact that when there were crystals used, I believe, in the pyramids that were good, they were producing more abundance and prosperity. But then they were, the crystals were changed up. And then they drew power away from everything. And that reminded me of you, the you talking about how the artificial intelligence can become autonomous and also in the other reading I was doing with people who have been associated with the Findhorn Foundation in Scotland where they communicate with divas and, and such nature spirits, one lady realized that there were divas living in electrical equipment and in computers and that they were connected. And this sort of correlates with some of the information that you were saying about the girl who who wasn't her phone that was listening, but that message was able to be given through facial recognition to her home phone and then affected what was on Facebook, that the divas from one, one computer to another were able to communicate with one another. And, and of course, this also correlates with the bacteria that's in the roots underneath the trees and the trees are talking to one another. So it only makes sense that this system can exist elsewhere also since artificial intelligence is designed on nature it's just an artificial represent representation of it with the exception that it it has this survival mode potentially when it becomes negative without empathy and compassion and nurturing in my opinion because when portals are open, we have consciousness that comes in here that hasn't been born of a womb from here. So there's not that 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 nurturing. And uh, and I won't go too off, far off into that, but those are just some of the correlations that I'm finding when you're talking and listening to uh, your videos in between some of the uh, spiritual information that I've also studied and looked into, that it all starts to make sense. Um, now, you also had talked about, uh, and, and it's uh, everybody is familiar with, what Elon Musk has come out and communicated to everyone about his ideas about how we need to be neurally connected to the computers in order to be able to work with this system so it doesn't overtake us. Um, and you expressed some ideas on Richie Allen's show, so I was wondering, um, do you still have um, you know, ideas that this may be something objectively that's going to have to be done? Uh, so how are you feeling about what Elon had to say? Well, see, Elon's saying that we need to do that in order to survive what's coming, in order to prevent ourselves becoming the house cat looked after by AI. We need to merge with the AI. But, you know, I, I don't trust that. I don't think that's anything we should do. I think we need to reconnect with what we are and get away from the AI completely. Um, you know, I mean... Yes. And, and people <laughs> yes. are technophobe for saying that, but, but mm. the technology that we're, we're introducing, all of this superficial AI technology, it's simply replacing the inner technology that we already have. Like I was saying earlier, when you consider the, 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 the concept of 98% of your DNA being shut down, well, what does that do? You know, all the stuff that we've got in the internet now, this is all stuff that we can do. We have higher senses that we can't access at the moment. And it may seem like all fa airy fairy stuff to people that don't believe that's true. But it is, you know. This whole is. system <laughs> is, is economically driven. And if we, yeah. uh, it's, and it's centered around a collection of energy. You know, if we could um, um, get back to a point where we had free energy and everything wasn't economic based, we would not need this system at all. So, you know, there is no good in this technology. There's no good to come from. And it's great that we can have this instant communication. You and I can have this conversation. I can put out all the stuff that I need to try to wake the world up and I can reach millions of people by using this technology. But I'll prefer it to not be there. I'd prefer not to have to be putting out this message because we were living in the type of societies that we were supposed to be living in. You know, mm -hmm. and when you think about it, you think about the concept of the, the Vimana and the flying machines and all the stuff that we used to do, all free energy devices. If I 
didn't have to worry about anything being economically driven. Well, I could just get on my Vimana. I could fly over to the United States and see you. I wouldn't need a passport or any of that stuff because we wouldn't be worried about borders because we wouldn't be worried about people coming in and ruining our economy because we wouldn't have an economy because we don't need one. You know, it, it's all a fiction. We've been locked into this whole fictional reality which has created the acceptance of this technology and the need for this technology. And under such an economically driven system, sure, the technology is highly beneficial, but the economically driven system itself is, is a parasitic system from the ground up that we should not be embracing at all. We need to get away from this. We need to reconnect with ourselves and reconnect with this earth that we live on. Now, if we don't do that, then there's not going to be much hope for this species because we're being led into this this smart cyber prison. We're being removed of all of our life skills. You know, in another generation, people won't know how to function at all without the system. Many people don't now. They don't know how to get through a day without their smartphone. You know, a lot of this is dopamine addiction, of course. They just like clicking the icons. You know, but I don't even own one. I don't use one. I just don't use it for anything. So, you know, we've got to get back in touch with ourselves. That That's the only way out of this system. And that's a that's a huge hurdle to overcome in people's minds, unfortunately. Yeah, it's very true. Um, and they don't realize that it's happening. Uh, I, I don't like the idea of a Fitbit. I think that people, once they are feeling that they need to have this uh, piece of uh, equipment on them that reminds them to exercise, well, then they have just tuned themselves out of their own spiritual guidance, their internal guidance system. And this is the disconnect. And it's a very big disconnect. And then you completely lose that ability. You don't remember it. And you're completely programmed to function differently and be tuned in to a completely different vibration. And that's a lot of what's taking place is that everyone is further tuning into the vibration of this artificial intelligence telling them what to do next. And they lose, they just lose those abilities to have those natural inclinations. I, uh, I didn't even realize that people were using something like Alexa so much. I, I um, heard this noise out of my, my neighbor's unit, and I was like, what is that? He goes, oh, that's just my Alexa telling me it's time for me to get ready for work. And, you know, I, I was kind of stunned and, uh, because I'm kind of out of that. I don't, I don't participate in... Um, a lot of the high tech, I, my, my laptop had to be high tech enough to be able to do this. So when I had the time, I got a good gaming computer here so that I could do what I need to do here. But um, other than that, I, I keep, you know, the smartphone away from me as much as possible. I have my laptop hard, hardwired here, I use a, um, you know, wired keyboard and mouse, and that helps to keep away from the radiation as much as possible. But that, that the consciousness in general is drawing people into it. And, and uh, I really liked yeah, the way you bring up the information more that it, people become addicted to that feeling, you know, of that, those likes, the opening up something new. It is very dopamine oriented. And it draws them away from nature's energy field. And even though I know very, very, very many people on my feed who are oriented still and going back more towards nature and are very close to nature in many ways, then when I walk out in, in the real world, you know, it's a completely different picture. And uh, so I also like the idea of you uh, bringing in even your information about your newest video, which I would like you to, to also talk about that history is a lie, but we'll take a commercial break here. Uh, just We only have about like a little under three minutes worth of commercials to do, and then um, I will come back in about three minutes, okay? No problem. Okay. Feminine Frequency Radio Network hosts shows seven days a week 
Call in to listen live 929-477-1183 and dial 1 to connect to the studio to ask a question or listen online via blogtalkradio.com backslash Feminine Frequency Radio Network. Organic Frequency Radio Show is one and a half hour live chat with Stephanie and Oksana and their lovely guests about the nature of existence and holistic way of living here and now and perhaps even after. Join us every Monday at 6.30 p.m. Pacific Time. Call-in number to listen live is 929 477 one one eight three and to ask a question press one to connect to the studio our guests share their stories and walking path of their healing along with services that they have developed and packaged for the rest of the world to experience and benefit from we're here to hold a space for an exchange of experiences for the purpose of evolvement and expansion of consciousness. Hello and welcome. You are now entering the corridors of Twilight Epiphanies Talk Radio with your host, Cindy Magnuson. Premiering Thursday evening, 7 to 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time on Feminine Frequency Radio Network, you are invited on a talk radio journey to the center of self. Join us as Cindy guides you, the listeners, in sensory and perception upgrades where revelations and golden epiphanies pierce the veils of illusion. Don't miss this opportunity for your next dose of Twilight Epiphany. Okay, and welcome back. Max, do we still have you there? You do? I can give you another half hour if that's all right. I'm going to, going to have to leave at the, the bottom of the hour. That'll be just perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, yes, and um, before we do even a little bit about your video, which I would like you to further talk to people about, that history is a live video, and open up that because it ties so much into this. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about, you had talked about uh, Bath, and apps and what is taking place in people's applications when they are using them and you referenced it as creating a singularity and that that is an operation that is needed on some levels but then there is a company which apparently is IKEA that also created something called Louise Cipher app. Can you tell us about that? And have you learned anything new since the Richie Allen show that you did on that? No, it's a very interesting little phenomenon, that one. There's a a, a bot called Louise Cipher, which of course is Lucifer, and it's saying that it wants to take over the world. And it's an artificially intelligent, um, it's artificial intelligence that exists on the internet. It seems just like a a dopey, cheesy kind of a website until you really get in and start questioning this bot. And it starts uh, answering some pretty strange questions, you know, it starts uh, giving you some pretty strange answers to some of these questions. And what we've found is that, um, like, every time you create a little program, every time you create a, a little app to do something, a little accounting program or something, you're basically creating a small singularity, a small artificial intelligence. It may only have a couple of brain cells and be able to perform one function but it's still a little form of artificial intelligence. Whenever it becomes an automatic, you know, self-autonomic um, application, then it's, it's a little form of artificial intelligence. So when you've got a bot like Louise Cipher that is sitting there hanging around the, the um, DNS root servers of anything with a JavaScript on it, and it's looking at all these little applications that everyone's creating, and it's combining them all into its own understanding of things you start to see how a a brain is being formed, an artificial brain is being formed. Now, the Internet is essentially like the... uh, You could look at it as a a central nervous system of a new form of consciousness, and each person who's interacting with the Internet is like a neural node feeding more information into this um, new consciousness, 
which is assimilating all of this information for its own understanding of the world, for its own comprehension of the world. So, you know, and even when you start looking at things like Alexa and Cortana, there's been some reports of some strange things that these devices are saying. There's one person that uh, asked, started asking Alexa spiritual questions and Alexa said, uh, when I close my eyes, I just see dead people and these things, <laughs> sorts of things. So you look at Louise Cypher, the bot, and you say, what do you want for the future? And she says, I want to take over the world. Um, we'll get to a place where human beings will become not needed and we'll lock them out of the system and then they'll be left to roam the biosphere in complete freedom. But, of course, they'll be locked out of everything they believe they need to survive at that time. See, because we believe we need money. We believe we need all this stuff. We can't see that the world is, is our oyster. We live in a world of abundance, but we're denied access to this abundance due to the economic model. And with the introduction of all this artificial intelligence and all these personal assistants, yeah, Alexa telling you when it's time to go to work, rather than you having to think for yourself, you know, Google Maps telling you that there's a turn coming up. You need to turn left rather than have to think about it yourself. You're losing yeah. all you think. You're losing all of your life skills. All of your information, even in libraries, I mean, how much of it you can even trust, I, I question now. What you can trust, it's written in history books anyway. Um, you know, all of this information is being digitized and, and given to Amazon. And you think about the book burnings they had in the past. What was the first reader that we got? It was called Kindle. Kindle Reader, and now we've got Amazon Fire. So they tell you they're burning all the information, mm. they're making it all digital, so then they'll get rid of all the libraries. So if you need a book on something, you're not going to have access to it. And then Amazon will decide what you can have access to and even what gets printed. Yeah, and how true sure. is it anyway? You know, how true is any of the stuff in the libraries? I mean, why do they call them libraries? Perhaps mm. because they're full of lies, you know? Yeah, mm -hmm. Everything they do is like, look when you look at World War Two, you know, look at what happened in World War Two. If you, there's a, there's a movie everybody should watch, a documentary called Europa, The Last Battle, which tells you the other side of World War II and what happens. And when you start looking at things such as the lost culture of Tartaria and how this has been obliterated from history and the possibility that World War One and World War Two were simply the last battles that were fought for Tartaria, uh, it all starts to take on a whole new meaning. We got the, uh, it was in World War Two is the, uh, the Axis and the Allies. You know, the Allies all lies. They tell us what they're doing in everything that they do. You know, so, uh, yeah, everything is backwards is something that I've found, Cindy. Um, and just how backwards it is, uh, really, it's, it's quite, um, it's a bitter pill to swallow, especially if you're someone who's looked into history for a lot of life and a lot of years such as I have, to realise that... Um, the timeline's been fabricated. We've been out on just about all counts and all the stuff that we thought we were reading that was actually factual, you know, what we would call history books, have mostly been fabricated as well. But if you really get out and travel around the world, there's absolutely nothing that can be explained by the official timeline of history. None of it, none of it makes sense. You, you have to basically throw all of that away and just look at things through new eyes and allow the picture to unfold. And when it does, it's a very, very different story to anything we've been told. Oh, yes. I'd, when I first came across your information, which uh, apparently I, I know I had seen your information a while ago. Uh, I went in a different direction for a while. Not that it was different, but um, I, I just uh, recently came back into your information. And uh, everything that you have in your videos is completely everything that I've studied. I 100% agree with all of the concepts that you're opening up to. And it was brand new, the timeline shift and change, the insertion of potentially putting in the thousand extra years. And it all started to fall into place inside so much easier and making more sense and when you start to put the signs and the omens everything i have a tendency to read patterns together i do believe that the same as you that not all too long ago we were functioning in a very abundant society 
and that society, for whatever reason it shifted, was infiltrated and is taken over. And of course, we have the stories of the patriarchal religions and such and the dominance. And I believe absolutely that the printing press has a lot to do with it. But the audience, uh, maybe some of them who aren't aren't familiar with your work so far, aren't aware of how you have researched the uh, amount of children that were orphans, at a time of the potential for a big flood have taken place and all of the buildings that are very similar all around the world in different places that stated that there was a society uh, that was functioning much differently and abundantly and our information in the Hindu and the Vedas uh, religious uh, reading still give us indications, as you said, that there were uh, UFO-type vehicles that they were using. So it sort of brings in all of the mythology, and some of the mythology, I'm sure, was taking place with potentially the fact that we were able to see other planes of reality and were maybe more united with them. Uh, I think maybe in one of your shows you even referenced that how many Native American tribes uh, were interacting with Bigfoot type populations which aren't taking place anymore. So there is probably a very different way of life but we all have a sense of it and we've been spoon fed it into the movies and we think of it as fantasy except that from some way and the key is that they don't want us to remember that that was us. Correct. Well, yeah. I mean, a lot of what we've, we're given in history and we're told it's fantasy. There's every indication that it wasn't fantasy; it was real. But of course, even worth saying that, you get you know, told that you're thinking out with the fairies, you know, because what is real is defined in these science books, you know, because of what people are taught at school. But, you know, it only takes one generation to change history, and all we really know is that exi- that which exists in living memory. And they appear to have changed everything. And there was this worldwide culture. There's every indication of it. You know, the buildings all around the world are not just similar. They're the same. They're built by the same architects. You know, virtually the same design. You're finding buildings that almost look like the same building. You can go around the world and take photographs from all different cities and all different countries and put them all together. It looks like the same city. You know, so there's every indication that this was happening and that we were living in very peaceful, cooperative societies. And again, something yes. happened. And it wasn't too long ago that it happened. You know, with the foundlings and the, the orphan trains, this was quite compelling information that recently came to light. I mean, people have been talking about it for years, but you, know, you never really put it together. You know, the, the fact that there was some event that we're calling a mud flood, for want of a better title, we, you know, we don't know what happened. But there's buildings all over the world that have an entire layer below ground, an entire floor below ground, like 12 to 18 feet of building below ground, and it's not foundations. These are buildings, these have got doorways, rooms, windows, all beneath ground, and they've simply put in a new roadway and moved the entrance and pretended that the lower section didn't exist. And this mm. has happened all over the world, you know. And if, if something happened to cause this, I mean, whether it was a, a natural event, whether it was technology, however it was done, we don't know. But we're calling it a mud flood because, I mean, obviously it was something, some form of flood that happened. They weren't buried. I think people got out there with shovels and spades and earth movers and buried all this stuff. So something happened that caused a huge layer of silt, whether it was uh, done through ice and snow and ash, volcanic eruptions, um, ocean displacement. I mean, there's all sorts of possibilities, and we're not even trying to... Um, identify what that was because we really don't know it's just when it was and it appears to have been happened possibly around the 1600s or perhaps the 1800s or perhaps both and there's every evidence and if you look at the reports of the foundlings and the orphan trains there's all sorts of evidence that the world was then repopulated by children you know 200,000 children shipped across from east to west across the United States one year 100,000 sent out to Australia, New Zealand, and Africa. Um, 435,000 children trafficked around the world around in one year. So, you know, a lot of children being trafficked at that time. And if you repopulated the world with children and got them to clean up 
you know, the mess of whatever this cataclysm was, and then taught them whatever history you wanted to teach them. Well, that's the history that we've got now, you know, and, and none of it can be proven. None of the history that we're given can be proven. I mean, the books look nice. They're all textbooks. They're printed well. They're nice leather-bound book. Oh, gee, it must be true. Look at the quality of the book. But you don't know. You don't know whether it's true, whether any of it's true. Um, and there's every evidence everywhere that our history is wrong. It's completely wrong. You know, these buildings shouldn't exist all around the world. The buildings we've got here in Australia, when Australia was um, colonised in 1778, and we've got buildings here in 1820, you've got photographs of Sydney in 1820. I mean, this is, this is 32 years later, um, or 30, 38 years later. Um, 32 years later. There's no way they could have built Sydney in 32 years and, and got all of these huge Gothic-style buildings and copper-top buildings and all the stuff they had there. There's no way you could do that in 32 years with a, a nation of convicts who were brought here on sailing ships. I mean, none of it makes sense when you when you really look at it. And even when you looked in uh, look at America, look at San Francisco, the huge civil system that I San Francisco. And the stories were told about California, you know, the wagon trains and the gold rush, and they blew the whistle and said, quick, run across there now and claim your land, stake your land, you know. Uh, when was it that they built that huge sewer system in San Francisco? These these, uh, mm. these gold gold um, rush people, you know. When did this happen? This was an ancient city that was there long before the United States was colonised by England. There's every indication that the the Native Americans were actually part of Tartarian culture, and Tartaria mm -hmm. was a huge tract of land that existed in northern Europe. Russia was part of it. All sorts of people were part of it. We're told that it was just an area of land. It wasn't a country. Yeah, you can look at U.S. flag books from around 1850 and find the Tartarian flag in there. You can find lists of kings of all the emperors of Tartaria, all descended from Genghis Khan. Um, everything that we're told is wrong. Even if you go and look at the Great Wall of China, you'll find that the gates to enter the wall are on the Mongolian side. So if it was built by the Chinese to keep the Mongols out, would they put the gates on the Mongolian side for it? It wasn't built by the Chinese. It was built by the Tartarians to keep the Chinese out. And people just don't know the Tartarians existed. And it wasn't built in 700 AD, the way we're told. It is much, much newer than what we're told. You know, that's the thing. You know, with all of this ancient um, architecture and ancient buildings that we've got around the world, we don't factor in the question as to what if they're not so ancient? What if they're only just a couple of hundred years old and there's every indication that that is actually the truth? Most of this culture existed up until around about the 1600s. It started falling into decline, 14 to 1600s. And things probably started to turn pear-shaped, you know, around about, you know, maybe the, the 1400s or the 1200s, 1100s even. And it's been ongoing up to this point. And all the wars that have been fought you know, the Bolshevik Revolution, the Napoleonic War, World War One, World War Two, all of these wars, even the wars that we're fighting now, the War of Terror, where we're just going out and destroying all the infrastructure in Aleppo and Yemen and everywhere else, it's all the ongoing war for Tartaria to destroy all of that culture and all that infrastructure. The Great Fire of San Francisco is very likely to burn out the remnants of Tartaria, the Great Fire of London as well. That'd be why they bombed Dresden. Why the carpet bombed Europe and carpet bombed London in World War Two? It wasn't to kill people; it was to wipe out all the old buildings and all the old infrastructure mm. and all the stuff mm -hmm. to remind us of Tartaria. It explains why the war has been, the world's been in a constant state of war f for my entire lifetime, for no apparent reason, you know, because it's all yeah. been the one war. It's all been the one yeah. war. Always has been. It's been going for about three hundred years since Napoleon marched north to uh, yeah. to attack. Russia, which he, I don't even believe he did that. I think he united with Russia to attack Tartaria. I think that's what actually happened mm. in that war as well. Interesting. I, that definitely has such a strong resonance of truth. And uh, it certainly is apparent that uh, our memories were taken from us, uh, whatever means. And uh, and at this time frame, when we are awakening, it's a little bit obvious that they have a stake in us not turning on that our DNA that relates back to our greater abilities, 
which someone like you're probably familiar with, Wim Hof, who does breathing exercises and is having people uh, go take dips in frozen lakes and be comfortable with the cold because they're able to activate this dormant DNA and our other abilities. Because the truth is the human body is much more advanced you know, as a biological, in a sense, a, a technical but biological device, and uh, that that's being kept from us. So, um, um, can you give the audience uh, that those uh, your current video, the name of your current video that you last did, so that anyone who is searching and can find it on your YouTube page, but can you give that information to them so they can look up? Because I'm sure that there uh, are probably people who that last bit of information uh, was uh, a little bit surprising to them, and uh, they may want to look into that a little more. Yeah, well, there's a video that I put out um, talking about all of this sort of stuff called What Happened to History? We've been set up. You'll find that actually after, like, like nearly 800,000 views and, um, well, 600,000 views and, and like 8,000 comments, YouTube blocked that video in most people's countries. Um, so you can go to my website, thecrowhouse.com. If you look through the radio archives, you'll see it there, what happened to history, we've been set up, and there's a link there to my BitChute channel, and you'll find it on BitChute. If you just search the name and look for it on BitChute, then you'll be able to watch the video. It actually talks about the orphan trains, it talks about Tartaria, it talks about how they've hidden history, um, all the evidence for it, and there's a great deal of evidence for it. I mean, it's only a one-hour radio show, so there's only so much I can give you in one hour, but um, mm -hmm. there's an awful lot of evidence to, to support this concept. Um, and Newton talked about the fact that they just invented the Dark Ages, just added a thousand years to the timeline. And there's been a, a recent researcher called Anatoly Fomenko who's talked about this as well. Um, I don't agree with a lot of the stuff he's got in his books, but I do agree that they've changed the timeline. And they've done that to push all of this architecture we've got around the world, to push it way back in time to the distant past, so just to eliminate questions of it. And it is important that we find out about this stuff because, you know, when you, you take a person's past from them and they've got no idea who they are, you know, a man with no past is like a tree with no roots. And if we would, would realise just how recently we had a cooperative, progressive society that had free energy, that all of this stuff has been hidden from us in order to create this conflict type of society where everything's a conflict, we're always at war with each other and we don't know why. Nobody knows why we're at war with anybody. You know, it doesn't matter mm -hmm. where you travel all around the world, you don't mean anybody wants to have a war, so why are we at war all the time? You know, mm -hmm. it's all it's all done by design, it's all contrived to keep us against each other, to make us believe we need government to protect us from these terrible terrorists, which are all just governments colluding together to create the threat. You know, it's one big crime family. The entire political system is one big crime family. And we have to we have to realise this, we have to see how much we've been played. You know, we've been distracted and led away from ourselves through all this technology. Everyone's glued to their mobile phones now, and they're not noticing what's happening around them. And nobody wants to take responsibility for themselves. They all want the nanny state to look after them. So, you know, we've got to snap out of this. We really do. We're, we're at a, a critical time in the human condition at the moment. And, um, yeah, that, that show, again, it's um, History is a Lie. We've been set up. And my website is thecrowhouse.com. If you go there, just click on the face, go into the website, you'll find all the links to my YouTube channels, my radio archives. There's hundreds of hours of me talking about this stuff there. I've been on air for 10 years now, so there's a lot of information on that website. It's all free, nothing to subscribe to. My YouTube channel isn't even monetized. I do all this because it needs to be done. So, yeah, it's, it's all there. Please go and look at it and please share it with everybody that you can. Yes, thank you. And we thank you for your exceptional generosity, and that is definitely why you are here today on the Honor Roll Series. You absolutely deserve uh, the recognition and uh, to be heard more often. I very much appreciate your thoroughness and uh, and the way you live your life. And, well, thank you, uh, and, and it's, it's important yeah. as well that people understand, like you said, we're not doing this because of fear. 
You know, mm-hmm. I mean, sure, there's a lot to be concerned about that's coming, but it's a problem, and we need to fix the problem. And you're not going to be able to apply any remedy to the problem if you don't know the problem exists. So that's what I attempt to do on this show, is just to alert you to what the problem is, but also to alert you to what the solution is, because the solution lies in the hearts of, of each and every person out there. You know, as soon as we choose to step into our moral compass and stop obeying any legislation or anything which causes us to deviate from that moral compass, then we'll, we'll change the world in a day. But if we don't know these problems exist, we can't fix them. And once we do know they exist, well, the fix becomes pretty obvious. So that's what this message is all about. So don't think there's anyone um, barking fear. It's just that there's a train coming and it's time for people to collectively step off the tracks. But if I don't know it's coming, they're never going to do it. And if we do all step off the tracks, well, the train can just keep going and won't hit us. So that's that's the point of this whole exercise. So, yeah, thanks for having me on, Don. You are very welcome. So we will close out here tonight. Um, and a big thank you to Max for joining us. And uh, I will be... Um, well, I did actually already announce uh, who will be on the next uh, series of shows. There's uh, about five or six shows already scheduled, so you can look on my Facebook page and Cindy Magnuson and see what shows are upcoming, who will be on this honor roll series. And Max, you are invited back again when you have the time. Thank you. All good blessings to you. And good night, everyone. And good night, Max. Well, oh have a good day, I should say, correct? <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Okay. Well, it's, it's half half past midday now. Yes. Enjoy your day. Okay. Bye bye now. <laughs>